Today we're talking about what I consider my most problematic student. Now, you might think it's the individual who falls asleep or someone who is texting in the back of the classroom. Well, I'm concerned about these students that, that they may not be learning as much as they should. Truly, they're only impacting themselves. It's what I call the alpha student that causes the most problems. These students can not only impact their own learning, but they tend to try and hijack a class and they might actually impact and decrease everyone else's learning. And how do they do this? First off, they want to monopolize every single conversation. I ask a question, their hand goes immediately up. They don't provide a short and concise answer. Instead of a 20 second answer, it's like a minute and 10 seconds or something. So you have to try and cut them off. Then when you ask a rhetorical question, their answer is, yes, that is exactly right. And they have now inserted themselves into the um, class and the lecture unnecessarily. And the problems with this monopolizing the class is that it has the potential to de decrease the learning across the entire class. Because of so many comments, you may not cover all the material you want. You, they won't let you necessarily leave a topic you think is sufficiently covered, and you've got to keep responding to their questions or their comments or their arguments. Besides that, you can literally see individuals sitting behind them getting super annoyed. They're getting mad. They're getting frustrated. We already got this. We want to move on, but we can't move on. And so as you're looking at this, you're going, wow, this is now challenging my authority to run a good class. My job is to provide a good class. This student has now unintentionally challenged my authority, and I need to do something about this student so that I can recapture the, the respect of my students and continue the class moving forward. Now, not only does that cause a problem, so now if you say, well, please be quiet in the middle of class, suddenly you may create an adverse environment where no one wants to talk. This happened to me once. I was sitting in a training with the rest of my faculty. I was providing a lot of comments because I didn't necessarily agree with them, and the individual who was running it said, shh, we've heard enough from you. Let's hear from somebody else. Now, I'm very grateful to my faculty. They didn't say anything the rest of the time, and it created a very adversarial type of environment where very little learning came off and the training didn't come off very well. So the question is, is how do I deal with these type of students to make sure that I offer a good class to all students? I have three primary ways I try and deal with the alpha students. My favorite is just lecture-based tutoring. I say, Dave, what's your answer? And sure enough, the alpha student will start to provide a comment. And it's very polite for me to go and say, oh, I'm sorry, we're looking for Dave's answer now. And then I'll ask a couple other people, and then when I open up to the class, hopefully the student has already had their idea expressed and they can't say anything anymore. Now, sometimes alpha students don't really pay attention to the social nuances around them, and so it happens a second time. And now I said, Sarah, what's the answer? And they will start to respond. I will usually let them do their entire response. And then I'll say, thank you, Sarah. And they'll go, now let's hear from the real Sarah. And at this point, I've become a little more confrontational. Now, if it happens a third time, I will become very confrontational and say, no, you, you need to understand, you need to wait your turn, or I'll do something a little more confrontational to try and let them know that it's out of place in the classroom. But I don't want to go to that level if I don't have to. Now, this idea of cutting the student off is my second favorite idea. I'm not re you know, I've called on them, they've started to give an answer, I'm okay with it, but instead of being a nice 15 second answer, 20 second answer, I can tell it's going to drone on to a two minute soliloquy by them that they're trying to quote Hamlet or something. And so what I will do after about 15 or 20 seconds, say, oh, that is an excellent point. So what you're trying to say, and I'll summarize their comments, and then I'll either turn to the next student on my card and say, what do you think about this idea? Or I'll say, all right, how many students in the class think that this is right? And suddenly, you've taken their idea, you've given them credible value of their idea, and you've transferred it to the rest of the class. If I have to get worse, sometimes I've got to say, you know, that is actually an excellent comment. You know, you can take for, talk for hours and hours about this, but I think we've covered the topic sufficiently for this class, and we need to move on. If you would like to come see me after class, I'm happy to continue this conversation. Those are my three favorites because it doesn't change at all the way I'm teaching. Now, occasionally, I like to transition by, does anybody have any questions? That's when I'm switching between topics. Now, I don't want to do that if there's an alpha student in the class. So now I need to come in and say, well, now that we've covered that topic, let's move on to the next topic because I'm trying to figure out how to transition and things like that. So they actually caused me to change my class and I'm just not opening up the opportunity for any questions. Now, obviously, when you 
ask for questions, people raise their hands, I will tend to call on that alpha student last. But now I feel like I'm trying to ignore a certain student in the class, so that doesn't make me feel as comfortable either. But it does help. And although I've never used it, I have seen faculty say everybody only gets two comments per class. But then you run the risk of people not willing to comment at all, and that can also help hijack your class. So those are some of the strategies I use. Now, unfortunately, the class is mine, and I am responsible for it, so that can lead to some very poor scenarios of things that I really, truly have to do. Sometimes the simple techniques to help control an alpha student don't work. But you are responsible for the learning in your classroom, and so it's very important that you take control. And now come some fairly unpleasant discussions. The easiest one is to send them an email and have them meet you in your office. There you should discuss about social norms, how important it is to pay attention to what others are thinking, and not to monopolize and ask them to comment less. Now, at Kansas State University, I have the right to kick a student out of my class. Now, I'm always concerned about that right, because I think I might get sued for impinging upon their ability to actually learn. And I've never had to use that, but I do know it's something that is there. Now, in any of these situations, it is something that is very uncomfortable to talk about. I don't want to get emotional in these type of situations, and so I practice exactly what I'm going to say. So it comes off as, in some sense, cold and calculated, rather than I'm irate and mad. So, for instance, one time, I had a student say a disparaging comment about females. And I knew exactly what to say, so it ended well. I said, I'm sorry, I cannot tolerate language like that in my class. You need to see me immediately after class, and we need to discuss this in great detail. And it worked out very well. Everybody recognized that I had control of the class. They had no idea what was commented about. The student came to me and said, oh, I was just trying to be funny. I didn't mean anything by it. It's not what I really mean. I'm like, will it ever happen again? He's like, nope, never, never, never will happen again. Never, ever had a problem. The student still was able to comment in class the rest of the time. Everything worked out about as perfectly as it could. Now, truly, I hope that you never, ever have an alpha student in your class, but I believe that you will. And I hope that you are able to use this to help control your alpha students better so you can have a nice, conducive learning environment for everybody. In particular, I think those alpha students are very bright and helping them with their social norms will make them successful. Thank you for your time.